right, ladies and gentlemen, to be successful for today, you need to have a whiteboard and your notes out. Your notes are there for two reasons. You can add to them. If you get something wrong today as we go through content, you can add to it. Or if you don't know the answer, you can flip through. Today, what we are doing is we are reviewing for our test tomorrow. It is the first test of the year. It is 25 questions, all multiple choice. There's no essay component, none of that. Um, it will be graded before you leave class. It'll be posted on Canvas, so you will know before you leave. I'm that good, Andreas. So we have all classes to do. We do, but people will finish pretty early because it's not that hard. I'm an AP Gov right now. AP World, it will be to the end of the period. You'll see what the test looks like. It'll be totally different. Okay, so when we're talking about the test tomorrow, it is 25 questions on multiple choice. It is not stimulus based. It is going to be, as a, it's content based. Okay, this is your actual test tomorrow. There's one component there. You will see it is just straight up stems. They ask you a question or give you a scenario and you have to identify what is happening. It's literally definition application or they ask you to define this word or they give you a situation they ask you to tell me what that word is. It's totally different from a push, AP World, or AP Euro. So it is much more like AP Human, AP Psych. Now, after tomorrow's, after you take the test, you will have seen pretty much everything for this class. Let's see. It is. This is a blend. Um, it is on both week one and week two, so it's on everything we've covered in class. So that is your declaration, that is your article about the Constitution, all of those documents are on it, and as we go through it. Lucy, we are going to go over a pretty intense review today, so you'll feel pretty good about what's on the test tomorrow. And pretty much everything is on the test. <laughs> so, um, yes. Friendly reminder, tomorrow you have a focus, which is not that hard to complete, and a vocab. Every single word on that vocab needs to be completed, yes? Even if I didn't quiz on it, you're still responsible for it. You are turning that in by hand. If you haven't turned in your Constitution Declaration, please turn those in. They are due tomorrow. And tomorrow, after your test, you will pick up week three's assignment. We are doing federal government starting Friday, so you will have those assignments. I'm telling you right now, I am warning you, the pace of this class is going to pick up significantly. Now, the outside work is not going to be additional. What is going to pick up is the pace. You won't have two weeks to learn the content because every week you'll have a test going forward. Is everyone clear on that? Okay, so. This is the first week, you've seen all the things. You don't have more homework or anything like that, but you do have three quizzes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. You test on Thursday, we start new content Friday. The pace is going to quicken. That's it. So, the skills and stuff, all the things that we do are the same, just the pacing, okay? Uh, any questions about what the test is? Okay, it's not stimulus. It's Biggest difference. Okay, it's on everything from week one to week two. So if I was you tonight, I would really be looking at my vocab and my lecture. You have to make sure focus. Um, the focus is really nice because it pulls information through. The focus from this week is really going to be used in the next couple weeks when I'm teaching something. I'll be like, hey, pull out your focus. This is what they're really referring to because next week I'm studying federalism, and how they all kind of tie together. So that's why. Vocab and your lectures are the most important information. Good? Perfecto. What we're doing now is whiteboards. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to write the response on the board. Once you finish writing the response on the board, you show me, and I'll call on you. If I call on you, I just want you to tell me what's on your board. Everyone is participating. If you don't know the answer, open your notes and look for it. Sitting there looking at me, looking at you, not knowing the answer is not how this works. Is everyone clear? Perfect. Here we go. Let's start with some easy ones. On your whiteboard, ladies and gentlemen, please tell me how many branches of government does the United States have? All right, Ethan. Three. Three. On your whiteboard, please tell me 
who is the father of the Constitution. You can always just give me last name. You cannot just give me first name. You do not hang out with him. You are not friends with him. You don't get to call him by his first name. Last name is perfect. I got two answers. Show me your answer. Show me. Let's go. Good, Paula. James Madison is the father of the Constitution. On your whiteboard, who is the second major contributor to the Constitution? Second most contributor, Constitution. No. Who is it? Nick Hamilton. On your whiteboard, please tell me, who is the largest contributor to the Declaration of Independence? Hold on, hold on. I, I don't want to ask that question yet because I'm not ready to ask that question. On your whiteboard, please tell me what document talks about the consent of the governed? What British document discusses the consent of the governed? Ooh, I think we got some studying to do tonight. What do you got, Ben? The English Bill of Rights. What intellectual movement? is going to inspire the English Bill of Rights. Good. What is it? What is it, Ethan? The Enlightenment. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is the name of the most influential <laughs> Enlightenment thinker on the United States? Good. Who is it? Matthew. John Locke. On your whiteboard. John Locke is famous for his belief of life, liberty, and property. Those three things are called what? Life, liberty, and property? 
They are called what when all put together? What are they, Scouts? Natural rights. On your whiteboard. That is based on the belief that rulers rule because the people allow it. When the people don't allow it, they have the right to overthrow. What is the lock perspective? No. Oh, no, Scott, you're good. That's not going to work. Good. I got a lot of wrong answers. But not Kate. Kate, what is it? The social contract. The social contract. What is the name of Rousseau's principle that says it is the people who allow a king to rule? And when the people choose to disagree, they have the right to burn it down. What is it, Aiden? It says it's a garden. So what is the biggest, easiest difference between social contract theory and... Consent of the governed. What's the biggest difference, Anna? Social contract theory is um, someone as an individual. Co yes. One's an individual, one's versus society. Who does social contract? Someone. Who does consent of the governed? Rousseau. It is important that you understand. Rousseau influences John Locke. Okay? So keep that in mind. Rousseau comes first. Hence why. We have consent of the governed in the English Bill of Rights, yes, a long time before. Um, they're influential. So he's a couple generations before John Locke comes in. Consent of the governed is the so, it's the older thought. John Locke comes up with social contract theory. It influences it's about the identity of the individual versus consent of the governed and societal. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the first document traded on American shores, or New World shores. What is the name of the first document attempting to create a government? Okay, it's going to fail. What is it, Olivia? Mayflower Compact. Mayflower Compact. I've been trying to be on American shores. on your whiteboard this whole time. On your whiteboard. I have a question. Yeah. In my notes, I have that in the Mayflower Compact and the Articles of Confederation. Okay, the Articles of Confederation is the first attempt at the U.S. government to create a government. Okay. The Mayflower is the first document on the shores, like geographical shores. Oh, okay. Like, big picture. It's the first document that's trying to set up a government on the shores in in what will become the United States. So it's like the first attempt. And the United States is definitely not even a thought. Okay. Okay, so this, uh, it was a while. I think it's like in 1617 or something. Uh, which is well before 1776, right? Yeah. So it's the first attempt. Thank you for asking for clarification. Kayla, you're off. Don't waste my time. On your whiteboard! Please tell me. What year was the Declaration of Independence done? What do we got? Meriwether. 1776. On your whiteboard, the Declaration of Independence is the greatest breakup letter with what country? Who's it against? Good. Ben. Who are the two audiences? Who are the
the two audiences of the Declaration. Don't just write people, be specific. Good. Show me, Ty. Be proud of your answers, man. He's killing it. Ty, who are my two? The colonists and the pink. There you go. Those are the two audiences. Here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me. True or false? American colonists believe they're British citizens. We got 50 50 shot. True or false? Steffi. True. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Please tell me. What type of government does the UK have? No. <laughs> no one has the perfect answer, which is fine. If you write monarchy, it will score, uh, like, that's what they're looking for for U.S. government. When we get to comparative government, that will not score, but we haven't talked to you what the government structure of England is. It is a parliamentary monarchy, because it has both a parliament and a... There you go. We'll clean up that language as we get there, but AP Gov, you just need to know we're trying to get away from a monarchy. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is, how many states or colonies will sign the Declaration? Josh. Whoa. On your whiteboard, what state doesn't? We're doing boards here, Olivia. Whoa, we are getting our documents confused. Which one, Parker? Georgia doesn't sign. Georgia has a weird relationship. Ah, uh, weird. Just kidding. Yes, Stephanie. Constitution. Okay. Why does Rhode Island not want to sign the Constitution? It makes logical sense if you stop and think about it. What do you got for me, Emily? Why? But why would Rhode Island like it? The Articles of Confederation. Rhode Island. What is that? Right, so when we hear the answer, you're gonna be annoyed. Andreas, what's the answer? Why would Rhode Island like the Articles? They're a small state. They are a small state or the? The smallest and under the Constitution is that have to like, fight with other big states. Yeah, so Rhode Island really likes the AOC because they're the smallest state and under because they're the smallest state they have the most power under that document. All right here we go. On your whiteboard please tell me what is please tell me what is the name of the I just want to make sure I'm not asking too many questions. Here we go. I'm ready now. In what British documents you got a 50-50 shot does consent of the govern appear in? What British document does consent of the govern appear in? Uh, what do we got, Olivia? English Bill of Rights. On your whiteboard, ladies and gentlemen, during what time in British history does the English Bill of Rights appear? Stewart. Sounds like a good time. Really not exciting. What is it, Jillian? The Glorious Revolution is when this comes up. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of the event that will cause the continental, nope, that will cause the Constitutional Convention. What event causes the Constitutional Convention? Well, it. Today's Rebellion. What Congress signs the Declaration of Independence? What Congress signs the Declaration of Independence? What do you got for me, Lucy? Second Continental Congress signed the Declaration. On your whiteboard. The, con uh, the Articles of Confederation fail for multiple reasons. Give me two. 
What are two reasons why the Articles of Confederation fail? I am perfectly fine with you flipping through your notes to find these answers. Sitting there doing nothing is not okay. <coughs> Good. Okay, okay. Here we go. Give me one, Jillian. They couldn't tax nationally. That's a big deal. What's another major problem, Meriwether? No central government. No central government, which means no what, Luke? No president to execute it, to execute the will. And third, what's the last good one? Lit. There's no way to uh, settle complications between states. Okay? On your whiteboard, here we go. How many people were at the Constitutional Convention? Six. So nice number. No. Good. Anna? Fifty-five. Fifty-five. Give me. Who is the dude leading the Constitutional Convention? Who is the dude leading it, overseeing how things are going? Andreas? George Washington. There are two sides opposing each other in this convention. What are the names of the two sides? Good. Now, do not erase your boards. Don't do it. Who are my two teams, Ethan? Okay. I am going to ask you a bunch of questions about either the Federalists or the Anti-Federalists. All you're going to do is put a star next to the answer on your board, so you don't have to write the same thing a thousand times. Sounds good? Here we go. On your whiteboard. Who believes in states' rights? Good. Who do we got, Ty? Anti-federalists. Perfect. On your whiteboard, put a star <laughs> next to the one that wins. Good. Ben. is supported by farmers and small states. Which one is supported by farmers and small states? We got Parker. There you go. If I am a wealthy merchant, which one am I supporting? Oh, I thought we'd do the board thing. <laughs> you can wipe your boards out. I'm ready to move on from this one set. On your whiteboard. <coughs> you write over there? <laughs> yes, sir? Do we have to know who is a federalist? And who is a oh my gosh, did you know? Were you reading my mind? Because there are three federalists. Who are the three major federalists? Good. Kaylin, who are they? Perfect. On your whiteboard, what pamphlet do they release 85 copies of? Not as hard as you're making it. Yeah. What is it, Lily? Yeah, because they're federalists. Yeah, it makes, it makes sense. Here we go. On your whiteboard. Um, I'm not going to be mean. I was going to ask you a question and say you have to say it, but I won't. There are no stated anti-federalists you need to know that I've taught you as of yet. There is a guy called Brutus. You haven't met Brutus because you haven't done the primary for it. But he's not an actual real person because no one like walks around the colony with like, named Brutus. You know what I mean? He, it's a pen name, yes. We don't actually know who Brutus is, but he's the guy. There's not really one quintessential person who is an anti-federalist. Is everyone clear on that? What? Was he one of like the farmers' market projects? Uh, no, they think he's a shopkeeper from New York. 
so they think he's one of they think they know who it is, but it's never been confirmed to their sure. So there are lots of anti-federalists, but keep in mind they're going to be small business owners and stuff like that. Yes, those people's names kind of get lost in history, right? I mean, we can all not trying to be mean. You are special. You are special, though. Most of us will be forgotten in the sands of time. Yes. When I die, no one's gonna give a shit that I die, and I'm okay with that. Okay. Very few. Of course, you will. People will care, and you will be remembered for all of time in the same calibers as Washington, Adams, Corn. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, please tell me what is. What are my three branches of government? Go. You are not going to erase your board. We're going to do the star thing next to this. <laughs> We're going to keep this a little bit oblivious. You are not going to erase your board. We're going to do the star thing next to it. What do you got for me, Kate? Who are they? The legislative, executive, and judicial. Perfect. Legislative, executive, judicial. You are keeping them on your board. Here we go. Put a star next to the one that's responsible for enforcing. Ooh, no. No. Oh, wait. What is it? Andres. Executive. Put the star next to the one that passes. Yeah. Ethan. Legislative. Put your star next to the one. I can't think of the term. Interprets. Damn it, thank you. Yes, and what is it, my mother? Judicial. Judicial. All right, put a star next to the one that represents popular sovereignty the best. It is a founding principle of the United States. What is it, Adam? Legislative. Who can raise their hand and tell me why the legislative gives us the best understanding of popular sovereignty? <laughs> Which means you have to know what popular sovereignty is. Matthew, what is popular sovereignty? Uh, people voting for the right to vote. Yes, people voting. So, Kate, why does the legislative branch show us the best example of it? Because we elect the people of Congress. Yes, we elect all of those people, okay? Some people put executive branch. Why is executive branch not the best answer? Aiden. Yes. How many people do we actually vote for a popular sovereignty in the executive branch? Two. Two. We vote for two. We vote for president and vice president. So there's two versus everybody in the legislative branch. You see the difference between them? Perfect. Put a star next to. Um, the one that gets to approve of a cabinet member. Which one gets to approve of a cabinet member? Ooh. What is it, Jillian? Legislative. It's not executive. What word would I use if I was saying it was executive branch? It starts with an A, Ben. Uh, I was going to go with nominate. Uh, nominate's not a bad, it's also a point. Okay, appoint or nominate, those are done by executive. So, there's a note on the system. Nominate or appoint our executive. Judicial are the ones that approve. On your whiteboard, who chooses Supreme Court candidates? Yeah, ooh. Here we go. What do we got? Steffi. Executive branch, okay? This is a check on the judicial system. You can't get into Supreme Court unless the executive puts you there. On your whiteboard, please tell me who controls taxes. Good. Well, it. Legislative. Legislative. Who controls interstate trade? Good. What do we got? Ben. Legislative. On your whiteboard, please tell me who uses judicial review. Adam, stop reading my ink, dude. What do we got? Jillian. Judicial. Ladies and gentlemen, I am simply asking. 
continue the content that I have covered over the last two weeks. My job today is to show you what you know and what you don't know. Some of you know a lot. Some of you don't. It is your responsibility to take this knowledge and do something about it for tomorrow, yeah? Okay, so I am showing you what you know and what you don't know. Some of you are good. Some of you need some work. Know where you are on that list. On your whiteboard. Last question with the three branches. Here we go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is the name of. Um, I don't think I have another question. Why is it? <laughs> I was trying to come up with the last one. Oh, well, here we go. Now, please listen very carefully. Going forward, including for tomorrow's test, Constitution, let's talk about it. I am in no way expecting you to memorize and understand the nuances of the Constitution for tomorrow's test. Can, we, can you hear me? Do you understand? This is not a law class. We are not getting our jurisdiction in this class, which is your law degree. That is not what we are doing. I, I need you to understand the basic foundation, okay? The basic components. I'm going to ask you questions really now about the big broad topics, and that is what I'm expecting for you to know for tomorrow's test and going forward. Is everyone clear? I am not expecting you to get your law degree between today and tomorrow in order to answer these questions. Here we go. How many articles does the Constitution have? Articles, not amendments, people. How many, Andrew? Seven. seven. There is seven. Article one creates what branch? Article one creates what branch? Adam. Legislator. Article 2 creates what branch? What is it, Andrew? Executive. Executive. Article 3 creates what branch? All right. What is it, Julian? Judicial. So, legislative, which has the most funkiness to it, yes? Okay, comes first, the hardest one. Second is the executive. It's right in front of mine. They are trying to create a more centralized government, right? Makes sense to be number two. Number three, they have to put the judicial system somewhere, yes? Okay, so, on your whiteboard, which article talks about the amendments and how to add them or make changes? What part of the Constitution is talking about the amendments and how to change the Constitution? The answer is what, Emily? Article 5. Article 5. Article five. On your whiteboard, please tell me what does... Oh, I'll give you numbers. I won't make you write things down. States' rights is article what? Good. Lit. Four. States' rights are article four on your whiteboard. Talking about how the Constitution gets signed it is located where? Scout? Seven. And... The concerns that face the Constitution going forward is what, Andrew? Six. Six. So, that is the big thing. So when we talk about articles, that's what I need you to know. Is that fair? That's, that's manageable. Now, inside the document, there are a couple things that I need you to know. Okay? I'm not asking you to memorize the whole damn document. In Article 1, so when I say Article 1, you immediately need to think of? In Article 1, they create a document that happens every 10 years. What is the name of the document that is created in Article 1? Nick, 
census. The census is required for what? The census is required for what? What is it required for? Ooh, I like, I got a couple good ones. What is it required for, Kate? House of Representatives. We elect people for the House of Representatives based on what? You just got away from my A. You're running on board. Good, Aiden. Population is how we elect our House of Representatives. Ah, we have two houses that are created in Article 1. What are the names of the two houses? Andreas. raise their hand and tell me why our legislator is broken up into two branches with two different ways to come up with voting. What is the combination here? Steffi? Uh, the Senate, uh, it's like you can vote Okay. And then have to represent the like, uh, lower house. But why do we have two different systems here? One, you... Okay, so what? Yeah. Yes. Okay, which house do they have more power in the small state? Senate, because everyone is equal with two votes. Who gets more power in the lower house? Big states because it's based on? There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me, what is, what do you got, Andres? House of Representatives is the lower house? Yes, it is the lower one, because there's only two senators and that's the big one. All right. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is. Please tell me what our two major concerns were going into the Constitutional Convention. What are two major concerns anti federalists and federalists had going into the Constitutional Convention? Yeah. <laughs> what are the two big concerns? Oh, there's four total, friends. But there are two big ones. Uh, give me two big ones. Okay. <laughs> sort of brilliant. I enjoy your board, but I'm going to say no on both. <laughs> All right, here we go. What do you got, Nick? Oh, we're well, supposed to show me your board so I can look at your answers to see if I want you to say them out loud. Because if I get you to say them out loud, then that means it's a good answer. <laughs> and you were so proud of it, you raised your hand so you could tell me that it was okay. Dead. The biggest controversy here, though, Nick, because remember, by the time we get to the Constitutional Convention, we've already had the Articles of Confederation. So we've avoided a king. What is the biggest problem, though? We're not trying to avoid a king, but we're trying to avoid what? No. <laughs> Hello. Steffi, help me. Too much power in the central government. Okay? We're trying to balance states' rights versus central government. Yes? Does this sound familiar? Okay, that's one of the major controversies. States' rights versus central power of government. Another major controversy is what word is actually never mentioned? Slavery. We only see it as unfree people. Where do we see unfree people, Owen? I'm not Owen, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. McCormick? Where do we see unfree people pop up? In Article 1. In Article 1, yes, why? <laughs> yes, because who wanted them to count? Um, the South. The South wanted them to count because they needed it to increase their? House, I think. 
representative. House of Representative. Excellent job, Mr. McCormick. Yeah, so slavery is never mentioned directly except for unslaved people, so they can count in the counting of House of Representatives. Perfect. Guys, keep in mind, power of the executive, how much power they actually had. I guess that would be your no king kind of thing. States rights versus central government and representation in legislative, where we have the breaking down of two houses. On your whiteboards, here we go. The Anti-Federalists won one major thing. Anti-Federalists got what? Anti-Federalists got what? What did they get, Ty? Bill of Rights. Bill of Rights, here we go. The Bill of Rights are the first what of the amendment? The first what, here? Ten. On your whiteboard, how many amendments are there? Good. Andres? Twenty-seven. What article in the Constitution is creating the amendments? Just checking. I already asked you this question, but I just want to make sure we got it. And what is it, Ben? Five. Five. On your whiteboard, please tell me. What is... You have a test tomorrow. Hopefully you feel confident after these questions. Leave your board on your desk with your marker 